long have you had uh, how long have you had her? When did she come? Saturday? Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she went ballistic when I took my hands on her. Oh yeah, she just I'm still bloody. Oh wow. Well. Yep. Scratches or what? Trying to trying to put her teeth on. Trying to put her mouth on her. Wow. She got super defensive, right? And this is the reason that we handle these dogs. The reason that we handle these dogs like this when they're small. We see that when they weigh 100 plus pounds, they don't try to put their mouths on people, right? Nobody wants a dog like this fighting back, right? And when he first did this with her, and when I first did this with her the last time you were here, she put up a big fight, right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I wanted you to work on. One of the things I wanted you to work on so that we wouldn't have to have that confrontation, right? So when we handle, Okay, all he's doing is he's grabbing the leash and collar in such a way that it immobilizes her head. Okay. okay. Left hand covers the eyes, strokes the back, covers the eyes, lifts the lips, strokes the back. He goes digging for gold in the ears, hmm. looks for daylight, feels for brain matter, right? If she starts struggling at any point, what do I do? Stop, wait till she settles, resume. And the reason why is because the lesson isn't I can touch him anywhere, the lesson is you're not allowed to struggle while I touch you anywhere, right? So we're not gonna beat the dog up. Can you do me a favor? Take some of these small ones so I can walk her up here. I want her to figure out, I want her to realize no harm is gonna come to you, but what happens is when the dog protests, and like, oh my God, they don't like it, stop. What the dog learns is, is, I can make you take your hands off me, right? That's not what gets to happen. Now, because this one is already pretty, you know, unhappy about being physically manipulated, you have to go through this a stage at a time. Stop that. Did you get the other one? Oh, never mind. She should be doing that. Right, see that defensive posture? Mm -hmm. It might be cool, that might be what you want when she's an adult, that's not appropriate at this point. Right? Come on up. We're having this conversation. She's Monday. Mm -hmm. I'm not going on the table, I'm gonna play my phone. Good girl! Oh, what a good girl! Right, and again, the process is not, let's beat up on the dog. The process is, I'm putting something in front of you that you're not gonna like, but you gotta do it anyways, right? Hi, good girl. Hi. Right? Good pup. Now, most of the problems with these dogs is, not these dogs, but dogs in general, when they get to a certain age, no one ever makes them do anything. Right? What we're asking the dog to do is not so difficult or so profoundly uncomfortable that they should fight that. But they invariably do. There we go. There we go. See that? You didn't die. You see how she's cupping her lips? Mm -hmm. Do that again, lady. I don't like it. Well, I asked you to sit. I didn't ask you to jump through hoops of fire, clean the toilet with your own personal toothbrush. I asked you to sit. Right? See that? Does she, what she wants to play? No, no, she wants him to stop touching her. Mm, okay. Okay? Do they ever grow into their skin on their faces? Like I'm sorry? These type of dogs, do they ever grow into like the extra skin? Or the... No. no. They always have some extra. Good girl. Now if you notice, I have a grip on the collar. Mm -hmm. My hands are coming from underneath. Then I have a corner of her flesh from the corner of her eye to the corner of her ear. Mm -hmm. Good girl. And all I'm doing, I boogie. All I'm doing is covering the eyes and stroking her. Covering the eyes 
Let's stroke it. Good girl. Look at them dirty ears. Look at them dirty ears. Good girl. Lift them lips. Very vicious. Very nice, right? We go with the speed the dog goes. Come on, monkey. So you, you do this because you want her to know that she's allowed to be touched? Well, we do this because in this dog's future, for the rest of her life, people that are not you are going to be touching her. When you take her to the vet, if you take her to the groomer, Just if you want to go on vacation, yeah. if you want to go on vacation, someone's going to take care of her for you. These are all things that she has to accommodate, right? Connie Corso, all of these old world guardian breeds come with a heightened level of arousal from birth, right? Lots of superstition. So we need to tell her that's okay in certain circumstances. When it's a 1.30 at night and you hear things creeping around the house, I want you to be suspicious. But when I take you to your vet, you don't need to be suspicious. I'm right there with you. Be still there in the seat. Right? So she's freaking out because of the noise that she's hearing over there. I'm able to mitigate that by simply how I hold her head. Right? The reason we cover the eyes is just the process. Forehead, stroke the back. This is something I want you to be able to accommodate without losing your ever loving mind. Right? I'm covering the eyes just because if I want to lift the lips, I'm going to be covering the eyes. Right? So one step at a time before the dog, you know, as the dog starts understanding that none of this is harmful, none of this is painful, none of this is startling, none of this is anything to get defensive about, okay? Mm -hmm. And the reason we practice with people the dog knows is because we create a patterning for these things because every time she goes to the vet, something similar to this is gonna happen every single time she goes to the vet. They're gonna lift their ears back, they're gonna check the daylight, they're gonna stick their fingers in there and give her a wet willy, right? She's got ear spooge, right? So she's got her ears clean relatively frequently. The way you get used to that is you have them on the table and you make ear examination a part of every examination. Like when you come in, you know, now it's springtime. So instead of dealing with snow and wet, we're dealing with mud and wet, right? I don't want that in my house. So if she's a house pet, I'm gonna be wiping her off when she comes in my house. I mean, wiping her feet off, right? Because she needs to understand that this is something that you have to expect, right? We don't want to have to do that the first time and have her freak out.